All right, let's go get lunch. What? What? What did you just do? I put it in first. You put it in neutral. What are you talking? No, you put it in first. No, you put it in neutral. Matthew, you put it in first. Why would you put it in first? Put it in neutral. Matthew, you put it in first. Right. The year is 1979. A man named Bob Hall pitches his vision of the perfect automobile to Mazda's R&D team. At first, they brushed it off. A couple years later, they brought Hall back to design their lightweight sports car. However, he was told he couldn't work on it during working hours. Which, if you ask me, is completely wrong not to pay the man Matt for a truly amazing. Fine. Despite his limited time, he continued his work. And because of that, we have the Miata. Since then, the Miata has gone through many generations, but today we're here to take a look at a particular generation, the second generation of Mazda's well-known roadster. The MX-5. No, the Miata. It's the same thing. It's really not. My name's Dylan. It doesn't get much better than this. Top down, fall weather, second generation Mazda Miata. Excuse the hair, it's all, yeah, I might need a hat. This car is so slow yet so fun. My name's Matt, and hopefully you can hear me because this car is pretty loud. Where did my hat go? Ignore Matt, this car is not slow. Because of its slow weight, it gets up to speed. Eventually. It's only 2,400 pounds and it has 142 horsepower, which I feel is the perfect recipe for a fun roadster. Yeah, I'm not wearing this thing. <laughs> Dylan, where's my hat? He's right, this car doesn't have a lot of power. It may not have the same zero to 60 time as some other cars, but who cares? That's not the point of this car. And if all you care about is going fast, then this isn't the car for you. Back to what Matt said earlier, this car is pretty loud. It's about 90 decibels in here and that's louder than a white girl at a frat party. This car was made for college parties. It was made for whipping around with your mates, not fearing death, being crazy, and it is, and always will be, one of my favorite cars. It's really fun, but you should stop reminiscing about your frat parties in college and let me take it for a ride, all right? Uh, I'll have you know, I was not in a fraternity. Of course you weren't. Look at you. Please spare me about how I changed gears. I'm still getting used to this. That brings us to the transmission. This car specifically has a six-speed manual. But if we're gonna get into all the options, it also comes in a four-speed auto and a five-speed manual. Yeah, don't don't ask. Correction. Dylan's an idiot. This car comes in the five-speed manual because it offers taller gear ratios. So if you want to live in the lower gears for longer, buy that one. The transmission in this is really good. The clutch is light, the shifts are firm. There was a little bit of trouble finding fourth from third, but it's an older car. The transmission may be smooth, but you want to be easy on the clutch and the throttle when it's raining, because this thing likes to lose traction. It's rear wheel drive, and with its very short wheelbase and its low weight, it'll give you amazing oversteer when you want it to, and sometimes when you don't want it to as well. It's lively. With its loss of traction in mind, this car has a good combination of grip, yet no grip. That, that doesn't make any sense. It's like... Matt, what did I tell you about the script? Okay, we'll skip that bit. Let's talk about the suspension. The suspension in this car is really good, but kind of stiff, which is nice if you want to drive it like a sports car. But you will feel every little bump. And some of them hurt. On the subject of comfort, it's obviously not meant to hold more than two people in a purse, but those two people will fit in pretty good. For a cabin the size of a kitchen pantry, I fit in alright, 
And granted, I'm not a tall man, but you get the point. I'm taller, by like an inch. And I can fit pretty well in here, but if you're over six foot or kind of closer to six foot, you might not fit too well in here. So if your Tinder profile says you're six foot, she better not see you fitting in a Miata. The Miata is iconic. It's a car that anyone can look at and recognize. And in the automotive world, it's a fan favorite. Where's Matt? Sorry, I stalled. Hop in, let's go for a ride. To save you from listening to me curse at Matt for ruining the transmission, we're gonna swap seats and take it out for a ride. So I'm just gonna start off here. I'm sorry about the continuity of everything. I know we had the top down originally, but the weather just decided to take a turn. Yeah. Oh, that's a Tesla. It was 60 degrees yesterday, and it is now 40 degrees today, so we are not putting the top down. Yeah. Um, but let's, I mean, let's start off. I, I want to talk about the interior. That's, that's for sure, because the interior in this, considering how old the car is, is nice. I mean, it's yeah. in good condition. I know that the in this specific car, the seat over here had to be reupholstered. For right? its time, the amount of stuff that you get is really good. You still have really good climate control. You still have really good. Uh, like you can change the uh, the head unit to have Apple CarPlay if that is something you wanted to do. And in this car, it was changed. Yeah, it doesn't which, have Apple CarPlay, but it has a head unit. Which it's, it's kind of funny because now that we've changed it, it looks like it's making a giant face at us. <laughs> um, which we'll, we'll put on the screen yeah, here. We'll, we'll put a photo up of it, but it's it, it, it kind of makes you laugh a little bit. <laughs> when you cross its eyes. <laughs> you know what I do like about this car? And again, this is another thing that we will put on, on screen here, but I love the, the gauge cluster at night. Um, it glows red, it's really pretty, um, and it, that, that's really nitpicky, but I love that it's like a, it's like an off-white color, and yeah. that's very, that screams 90s to me, even though this car is not from the 90s. Oh yeah, so speaking of analog, no traction control, no, no driver aids of any kind, um, you know, I mean, if this thing starts to slide, you control it, the car does not. Yeah. Trunk space, there is none. <laughs> you could probably fit maybe one. Maybe two carry-ons, but that's about it. Uh, if you stuff them, if you stuff them, I, I'd say we've got all of our equipment back there right now, except for obviously the stuff that we're using right now. Yeah, which we have a drone, uh, a backpack, yeah. and like two extra boxes for audio equipment. And there's still a good amount of room in there. We have a tripod and whatnot. It's obviously, it's not something that you're gonna take to the golf course and get all your freaking golf clubs in there. Right. But if you're making a small trip, fit a bag in there some clothes yep. there's a good amount of sliding though that comes with this car um, yeah if, if if you take a turn a little too hard you do find yourself sliding around a bit they're not necessarily bucket seats so you're not gonna find uh, sturdiness in this in this uh, area but they hold you enough but since they're leather you do slide around a little bit in them so if they made one with like a leather seats or if you were to change them out for a bucket seat it would hold you in a lot better than these do you know, with all of that said, though, every car has its quirks. Every car has its little foibles. It gives it personality. It makes you love the car. And if a car was perfect, you wouldn't have a connection to it the way that most people do. Yeah. You learn to love the flaws of this car, and you learn to know that the flaws make this car what it is. And then you have all the perfect stuff right on top of it. I think one of the Dylan could sit there and talk about this car all day while I just sit there and nod my head and say yeah. So I think it's time we take a step back and just let the car do the talking.
Bob Hall said himself that this car isn't about speed. It isn't about lap times and zero to 60. It's not about miles per gallon. It's about smiles per gallon. And that's enough to make this car special to anybody. This car really is something else. It's meant to engage the driver with this vehicle. It's meant to make you feel the excitement of driving. And Mazda has a word for this. It's called Jimba Itai. It means horse and rider are one. And they really capture that in this car. Mazda, you've outdone yourself.